Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. And in this Explorer, we're going to take a look at isometric um, layout, call it. <laughs> so you can make a game or a feature in sort of 3D, like this. Ooh, doesn't that look cool? So, um, in this case, we can press and make the ball go to a various square, like so. And note that when we're back here, it's just a little bit smaller than when we're up here. This is this uh, becomes bigger when we're up at the top. Let's try the drag version here. So, as we, if we're way back there, it's small. If we bring it up here, it's it's big. And we have depth sorting as well. So, if you don't mind, that, that can go through, and these these snap in place. And there's three three balls. Kind of cool, huh? We're going to take a look at the uh, at this one where when we click, it, it moves to. Um, a position. Alrighty, so close that down. We'll go into some code. And welcome. I'm glad you've come back. Or if this is your first Zim Explorer, please check out all the other ones. There's been lots of them, and uh, who knows? Maybe there will be lots more by the time you come here. Uh, we're bringing in CreateJS and working in Zim 7 here in a fit template. We've got nothing on the stage, so let's take a look at this in a browser. Open in a browser. There, see, nothing. All righty, are you ready? Hmm. Okay, so let's make the grid first. Uh, var tiles is equal to a new tile. Uh, that's funny, a tile is one of the later things that we added to Zim, yet it is actually quite, quite handy to have. So uh, we're going to tile a new rectangle like that. And we will make it 50 by 50 and choose a color, how about frame dot light and a border color frame dot dark. Ooh. Okay, and uh, that will work out all right, but we know that we'll want to uh, snap to the center of these tiles. So sometimes it makes it just a little bit easier. We'll want that ball to come towards the the center reg or uh, yeah I think that just makes it easier to center reg this in other words so if we want we can dot center reg uh, that just like so now if we center reg that will actually put this on the stage and then this rectangle is is being cloned to create the tile that we'll see uh, well let's just look at the tile and we'll, we'll make eight of those that's eight columns and eight rows. And then we'll dot center this on the stage. So let's check out our tile now. Oh, I think I already have a browser opened. Yep, there it is. Refresh. There's our tile. We'll want to rotate this and then stretch it. So dot uh, rote, rog, <laughs> to rotate 45 degrees. And let's just take a look at that. We'll do this one step at a time here. Okay, so a couple things happen there. One, I see a little glitch going on there. I'm not sure what that is. And I've rotated around the top left corner, roughly around the top left corner. Um, the little glitch is because we've actually center regged that. And by default, it will center reg this rectangle on the stage. Then it goes and clones it, so it just leaves this rectangle center edged on the stage. So we would want to say add colon false uh, right there. So center reg, the third parameter in there is whether you, you know, it's, it's, it's where the first parameter is where you want to center it on, and that by default is the stage. That's the container. So, and by default, adding is true, so it will add it there. And then the, the next parameter is the depth. So anyway, we want to get to the third parameter. So we've just popped on over into the Zim Duo there, passing in the configuration object of add colon false. Okay, so now we won't see that showing up in behind there a little bit. There it's gone. So we never added the first one. We, we do clone them and then we add the top. The next thing is we are uh, centering and rotating. If we dot outline that, you can see what's going on. Um, 
the registration point is right here so it was centered but we've just rotated it so really if, if we swap it we'd be better so let's uh, cent take the center and center it after we rotate that that works okay so wrote centering it would look like this let me just pop that back ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. oopsies and not bother rotating just a moment and let's show you the centering without the rotating there it is centered without the rotating but now if we rotate it it's going to rotate around this point right here this is the registration point of the first tile that's added now often that works out all right if we actually don't center reg our tile then you would end up with a, ro uh, an, a registration point in a more traditional place the top left corner so the registration point of the tile is considered the registration point of the first tile added that's just how it was chosen so if we center reg our first one then the registration point of the whole tile if I do this will be uh, as we've shown uh, maybe that doesn't really matter there we go uh, right so you got all that stuff so we want to center it after we rotate uh, here we go oops can't seem to paste that in very well hmm. And next we want to squash it so we want to well actually we won't squash it we'll we'll make the scale of the X be twice as big so we're wanting uh, and this will be rotated now oh I get saved save that rotate it Oop. we want the X to be twice as big so this stretches out and then the height will remain the same uh, but we're going to run into a problem because if we scale this, it actually scales it rel relative to how how it was originally or how the object is. And just because we've rotated the whole object doesn't mean that scaling it will scale in the X this way. It will actually scale in the X this way. So uh, I'll show you that, I guess. We go dot ska. And we make it twice as wide in the X and then the same width in the Y or the original width in the Y and see it's like oh darn that's not what we want so there's an easy solution and that is we need to put this in a container so we don't scale it here but rather we make a container bar holder is equal to a new container like that and then we center the tiles on the container it really matters or we just add it to the container and to the container and then afterwards after we've added this to the container we would say actually it may not matter I'll probably run the scale right up here come to think of it dot ska uh, two comma one and now you'll see that uh, that works out a little bit better refresh <laughs> or not f12 and it's saying reference container is not defined what did we do add to holder there we go so we made a container called holder and now let's check her out <laughs> still not <laughs> f12 persistence i don't see anything oh uh let's see did we add the container to the stage no we never added it so now uh, yeah, we got to fill it. Yeah, we may as well do this down below. Let's do it this way. Holder dot add. Well, center the holder. So that actually centers the holder to the stage. So remember, if you don't see something and there's no error, an error is the first thing to check. Don't see something, you have to make sure it's been added to the stage. And now it's been added to the stage, and that's what it looks like. Cool, huh? Now, if you don't like the scale there, and you want the scale, oops, not quite there here, and we don't want to outline anymore. Uh, no difference there. So we save that up and refresh here, and there's our board. Nice, huh? So to squash something that's been rotated, you often need to uh, well, if you want it sort of squashed in a certain way, you often have to add it to a container. 
and then you can squash the container and that keeps um, all of that working properly. Okay, let's make it so that as we roll over the tiles, we see that a tile lights up in a sense. So that would be tiles. We're applying an event to a tile, tile.on uh, mouse over, call this function. And we'll collect the event object. That's more information about the event, such as its target, e.target dot color is equal to what color do you want to make it? Frame dot pink, maybe? Frame dot pink and stage dot update. That happens after, so we need to update stage to see that change. And there it is. But we want that to go back to the original color, so we just copy this whole thing. And any guesses on mouse oot? Oh, <laughs> oot. There we go. I say it on mouse oot, but I don't spell it that way. No, 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 no. And now we'll change the target color back to our original, which was frame.light. By the way, these are just colors, so frame.light is something like number sign DDT, or maybe it's EEE. -E -E. uh, the EEE -E -E is lighter, DDD is light. But rather than type that out, I just frame.light. Like so, and let's check her out. Good. Did you think that would be that easy? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's make a circle now, or a ball. Our ball is equal to a new circle. And I don't know, how big do you want to make this ball? Um, maybe 40 or something like that. 40. And we, if we wanted to make it so that it looks like the ball is in 3D, then we would add a blur filter to it. I think you saw the 3D. I don't feel, uh, I mean, we could explore it, but go look at uh, the circle or a rectangle or a triangle in the documentation. And it shows you how you can add a radial gradient to the color command. Okay, we don't have in here, in, in, in these things, uh, frame red or something. We don't have in inside these parameters a way to handle all of the parameters of the gradient because that, that has a whole bunch more parameters. And rather than throw them into the circle, we use the color command afterwards. So that's a create.js property, I suppose. And then we can set a radial gradient on, on that. Well, do you want to see it? Oh, no, you don't want to see it. <laughs> there's there's an example. I would just uh, go look at the example. So here we have a var ball circle, uh, frame dot red. We want to give it a border, frame dot dark. And let's dot center that on the stage and see what happens. Now the circle's already center regged. So there she be. Oh, like I said, oh, that's all blue. Let's make that blue. Red and pink. There we go, much nicer. Okay, so now what we want to do is when we click on this, we want the ball to move to that position. Uh, you might want to put a shadow on the ball. This is a quick shadow, but you can specify other things here in the shadow. Let's just see what the quick shadow looks like. That's good enough for now. You might want a shadow. If you if you take a look at the example, we've manipulated the shadow so it's more of a, a an oval sort of down underneath here. Okay, uh, but that'll do for now. Now we want to move to this location. So we can get that location when we click if we want. So uh, that would be tiles again. Tiles dot on. Click. Um, call this function, and again we want to capture the event target. We can quickly get there by just saying ball dot x is equal to. Well, we could try this e dot target dot x. This is what your first try would be, and or indeed just pose 
do two of them at once. E.target.x and E.target.y. It's funny, I uh, grew up using X and Y and then introduced a pose here. I really haven't looked back. I thought I would miss ball.x equals this, ball.y equals that, but ball.pose, round brackets, and the x and y right in there. Uh, yeah, that's you know, one line. It just ends up being shorter. Don't have to do two. Okay, so we might think this would work, and we better update our stage here, stage.update. But we're going to see something unusual. I wonder if you know why. And we click. I was like, what? What? <laughs> Can you tell what's going on? It's interesting, isn't it? So there's 0, 0. Look at how that goes across. Isn't that neat? And then if we want to go down, we go down like that. But it's totally in the wrong place. And it's just going kind of like, wow, what is going on? Um, the x and y of these squares are the x and y within the coordinate system of the tile. But within the tile, it doesn't know it's rotated. It doesn't know it's stretched uh, or scaled. So in other words, it's just going, that's a 0, 0, then <laughs> the, ne the next one over. You get it? So 0, 0, the next one over. It doesn't know it's stretched, and it's putting it in there. So we're in the wrong coordinate system. So we need to match the x and y's of these things. So the x and y within this local coordinate to a global coordinate so that when we position the ball, it positions it in the place where it is when it's global. Okay, because right now it's getting local coordinates to that. So anytime we need to do that, that's local to global, global to local, local to local sort of things that we use. And that's one of the more confusing things in the programming world, coordinate systems. Okay, so it's not that bad though, and you get used to it after a few years, maybe five, <laughs> maybe ten. Hey, there's no problem at all. I certainly remember a time being confused about this stuff though. So you say whose uh, coordinate system? So uh, tiles dot local to global, and then the point, and that would be e dot stage x and e dot stage y. There's also stage dot mouse x and stage dot mouse y at any time, but I found that on touch screens, at least on the PC here that I'm using on touch screens, that's not uh, calculated properly. But the event object on a click or on a mouse over or anything like that, uh, if you use e dot stage x and e dot stage y, um, that is calculated. So I've had to, I used to always use stage.mousex, stage.mouse y, uh, but I've had to make a change to that. So tiles.local to global, oh, and we assign this to a point, var point or whatever variable we want. And what that will do is whenever we click, it will take the, um, oh, actually these are wrong. Um, we don't want the mouse click position. I'm so used to doing the mouse click position. We actually want the e.target.x. So this is whatever was clicked on, its x position. We want to go from the local of tiles to global and, and get a point. And this one as well. My apologies there. Usually it's uh, capturing the mouse and dealing with that. But here, we're, whatever we've clicked on, whichever target, that's the square we've clicked on, it's x and y, we're going to convert from the tiles uh, coordinate system to the global coordinate system. And we store that in point. So now this becomes point.x and point.y, like so. Okay, so we're changing the ball's position to whatever this global point is of those local coordinates. So we save that, and we come back in here, refresh, and click, monk. Uh, 
<laughs> not bad. <laughs> it is doing it. You see how the registration point of the circle here is right on the registration point of these things, but that's not uh, quite how we want it, it seems. I think we need to move that up a bit, don't we? Yeah, so that's a, a relative movement. That's no problem. So ball dot pose that, but we're also going to dot move that uh, none zero in the X and what like minus 20 or something like that. Oops, comma minus 20 in the Y. And let's check that out. Uh, this one kind of started off nicely, just naturally. And I don't know if that's exactly, it could be a bit more maybe. Does that ball look like it's in the middle? Uh, we'll go try 30 and see how that looks. That's pretty good. We didn't even notice. I didn't notice when it first started, but I think that's even a bit higher because if I click, you see that? So there it is just started naturally and I click it's a touch lower. Do you like that better? Uh, it could even be higher. Let's go 35. I don't know. I hesitate to try and even calculate uh, whether or not we're there. Yeah, that's, that's about got it. I think, take a look. There's the start. Now I click, no movement. All right, so yeah, it's nice. Good enough. Now, one thing we haven't done is this is the same size there, which is sort of in the back corner as it is here in the front corner. Now, do you see that? Optic, it's an optical illusion, isn't it? This just seems small. That seems big. It seems like we've got this huge thing back there and this little thing, little thing here. So we should uh, make it so that the depth is also adjusted as we as we do this. Alrighty. Well, in terms of depth adjusting, um, normally we... Uh, oh, we also want to animate it, don't we? Uh, yeah, so we might end up with a case. I was going to say we could just adjust it right here in the click. So when we click, we can change the size of it. But I forgot we should probably make this click. Instead of just position it there, we should animate it to there. And that's no big deal, really, I don't think. Um, no, it isn't. So what we do is instead of positioning, we dot animate. And oh, let's see. Um, will we need anything else? I don't think we'll need anything special with the animate. So we'll just say the animation object will be an x of point x. Minus 35. And the same for the y. Oh, no. Oh, the x didn't isn't minus 35 at all, because it's the zero there. It is the point is the y right here. Y. Y that is minus 35. So now we're animating with an animation object. Oh, if it's the animation object, we don't even need to put that in there. So there's the animation object, and we give it a time. How about 500 milliseconds? We don't need that anymore. So now we will animate the ball to X and Y in 500 milliseconds. So we save that, and we refresh here. And there she goes. Nice. So now we're, we've got a little bit more of a problem in that we uh, need to constantly be changing the size of this. So it's got to, as it goes from here to here, it needs to grow bigger uh, dynamically. So we would do that in a ticker. Well, as a matter of fact, there is an animate. I think the animate triggers now. I never really use it, but probably let's look that up. I would normally use a ticker for this. But like I said, I think animate actually has an event that says I'm animating, I'm animating, I'm animating. That was requested a while back. Probably just an animate event. Animate. So here's our animate. Boop, 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 boop. And if we scroll down through animate, we look at the events. The events are at the bottom of the docs right here. Zim animate will add an animation event to the target if the events parameter is set to true. The default is false because it actually takes some processing to, to do that. Or the animation event is added to the targets of all animation series, which we don't have. 
Okay, so uh, so what was was that? Um, if the events parameter is set to true, so we've got a choice to get to the events parameter. That's going to be like the twentieth parameter here. So we'd have to go common null, common null, common null, etc. Or we can drop this into a um, an object literal and call this obj colon as I was going to do before. That's the obj. This is the time. And then we can say events plural true event squiggly. So now we're accessing the events parameter uh, more directly there after we've passed in these two parameters. Did you got that? Sometimes we drop those onto multiple lines when we see that. And it closes up nicely, doesn't it? So this one closes that one, lines up there. Okay, so great, we've got the events true, and it's going to add it to ball. So uh, I guess we can still put it here, ball.animate. Oh, no, ball.on animate, like that, comma, function. I don't think I've ever used this. Let's um, just see what happens. Uh, let's zog animating and see if we're experimenting with something. Sometimes you just, you don't want to go too far. I don't want to start scaling the thing now. I don't even know if this is going to work. So we can just zog to find out if it is working. And let's try it out here. Boop, ba -da, boop, boop, and we'll need an F12 now. So we're all ready to check this out. We refresh. And when I click here, we should see animating, animating. <laughs> and I don't. So something went wrong. Uh, let's check that documentation out again. If the events parameter animation, what did I put for my, oh, I put anime. animation. We are getting animation. You see, if we started trying to scale it and we're looking for scaling, we might think there's something broken in the scaling. When it wasn't actually broken in the scaling, it was broken in, I've used the wrong event name. So there's the event. And we refresh here, boom, 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 and click over here. There we go, animating, and indeed the animating does stop. Uh, let's see, that is not good. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because we're going to be changing the size of this. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm just thinking, because we've got easing on the animation, it may be fine. You see how by default it sort of goes faster and then it slows down as it approaches? I would like to apply damping on the scale. Uh, on the scale. So as we change the scale going from here to here, rather than make it exactly, uh, I guess it should be exact. Yeah, why isn't it exact? Because otherwise you get it arrives here and it may then slowly can continue to get bigger because that's what damping would do. It wouldn't change it exactly. So maybe we don't want damping. All right. Uh, if we did want damping, you run into a problem though, because now animation has stopped. And uh, if you're trying to make damping work, the damping sometimes needs to happen after the thing stops. It needs to finally get to its resting point. So uh, we just won't use damping. The examples, the examples online uh, at ice, uh, explore slash ISO and yeah, .html, uh, they use damping in a ticker. But I'm doing something a little bit different. So you can see both both ways. I'll post in the Facebook or no, not the Facebook in the YouTube video link there. I'll post a link to the ones online. And you can see it with damping using a ticker, uh, which is how I would do it traditionally. Or here I'm just going to do it in an animation thing, and we'll just do it directly. So that's kind of too bad. And we can still use um, a proportion. In the other one, I use a proportion damp. So var proportion uh, is equal to a new proportion. 
Now, what proportion will do is it will sort of allow us to set up, well, when the y, it's going to be based on the y position. When the y is at this location, it'll be the scale. And when the y is at this other location, it will be this other scale. And then anywhere in between, it will calculate out proportionally. So it becomes kind of easy. Uh, sometimes we just say, all right, proportion. Uh, and if we take a look at the docs on that, proportion prop. Are you okay? Everybody doing all right? We're nearly there. Uh, here are the things that you can do for the proportion. If you did want to apply damping, then it's really easy. It's just basically the same thing, except we've added damping. And then you can use proportion damp, which we use in the uh, online example. So uh, I'll copy over the factor 2 just in case. Here are the parameters for proportion. A base min and a base max. So we may as well go with a base min of 0. That, that's when y is way up at the top. And a base max of stage height. When you're doing something that starts at 0, this proportion equation is pretty easy. You may not even use, need to use uh, zim proportion. But uh, I find it's just completely brainless using proportion and proportion damp. So even if it's an easy calculation, I usually still use it. And all that's happening in behind there is that easy calculation. So it's not like you're using a processing or anything like that. Uh, and when the calculation is not easy, when you've got sort of a more confusing type of proportion, then certainly you're saving in brain cells here. So the target min is uh, how what the scale is at zero. So what scale would we want at the top? Uh, so we can make it just a little bit smaller, like 0.8 or something. And then what scale do we want at the bottom? How about 1.3? Uh, we're just making up, up things at the moment. If you really wanted to see this better, uh, we could go 0.5 at the top and 2 at the, um, at the bottom. OK, so that sets up our thing that will do the calculating. And now down in here, as we're animating, we're going to be changing the scale of the ball. So ball.ska. And we would just pass in then um, proportion. Proportion. So that's a reference to our, our object here. Dot uh, convert. And then what are we converting based on? We're converting based on the y position of the ball, ball.y, like that, and semicolon. If you pass in one thing to ska, remember it will scale both the x and y for that. So there you go. There's the ball scaling. Now, uh, because we're animating the ball, that will automatically stage.update, so we don't need a stage.update in here. OK. Oh, look, it's a little puny thing. Oh, look, it's a big thing. So do you see what's happening there? As we change the Y position, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But obviously, that's too big for uh, our, our britches. <laughs> so we'll make it a bit like 1.3. And you can play around with that and see how that looks for you. So there it is. I click there and click here. Yeah. That, Looks a bit better. Neat, huh? If you want a more suspenseful game, you can make that animate in a longer period of time. Uh, proportional animation, a little bit trickier. So if you're only moving a small distance, make it animate over a small time. If you're uh, moving a larger distance, then animate over a larger time. Can be done. Neat, huh? Boom, boom, boom. Now, one thing I noticed, did you notice? As I watch, watch this, I'm going to animate to here. Watch the ball. See how it does that jump? So initially, the ball is at the wrong scale um, compared to these things. So you may want to make it so that the ball starts off with that. And so that would be something like... There's the ball. Do we have the where? Where do we make the proportion? There's down there. Okay. So after the proportion, we would say, well, basically the same thing that's inside of here. Ball dot scale to that. Okay. 
So ball dot scale to proportions convert to the ball y, and that just that just calls that right away. And then there's the ball, and watch as I go over to here. No, no jump. So it starts off a bit bigger. I think that's a bit bigger than it had started initially. Cool. And I would say that's a Zim Explore for um, ISO. What do you think? It's kind of it's kind of neat, isn't it? So Zim Explore for ISO. And I can't wait to try that out on different games and, and stuff. And also take a look at the uh, the URLs we'll post down below for how we did it when you can drag these things. So as you drag them, they change and then it snaps into the, the location. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great night. Ciao.